G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese, it's uh, not actually cheese, it's the safety method used often in aviation to stop bad things from happening because you don't want bad things happening in aviation or anywhere else for that matter. So Swiss cheese is a, is a strategy whereby you have multiple layers of protection and or multiple layers of risk management so as to make sure the bad things don't happen as I said. And I'm here at the Tokoro Airfield. Everyone knows the Tokoro Airfield and there's the lovely iconic tower. And we've had a problem in the past. There's a bit of a risk problem associated with manned aircraft landing on our lovely runway when it's actually marked as closed. Now, this is a multiple use facility, which means we have drag racing, we have driver training, we have very large jet powered RC models. All these things result in the airfield being closed from time to time so as to avoid a conflict between manned aviation and, and those activities. Now to date the method of managing that closure has been to issue a NOTAM and to put white crosses on the runway but as we've seen that's not really working very well because the number of incidents just keeps increasing and as I pointed out to the council over a year ago now the council by the way are the operators of this airfield they're the ones who say what happens here. Civil aviation enforced regulations but actually day-to-day -day operations at the airfield is entirely the responsibility of the local council. Now the council don't know about aviation, they've got no knowledge, skills, understanding or experience in properly managing an airfield so they're a bit out of their depth here and I've tried to help them out but they have this strategy, this there is this sort of philosophy that if I say the sky's blue they say it's red because it's me and they're not listening to me and they actually haven't listened to CAA themselves because over a year ago I emailed the council and said look you've got your crosses in the wrong place. Uh, according to the Civil Aviation Advisory AC139 the crosses should be one third in from each end of the runway and you're putting them beyond the runway at past the end of the runway. So what's happening is pilots are coming in seeing the crosses on the grass and thinking oh the grass is closed don't use the grass just use the tarmac even though there are cars and buckets and whatever on there. Um, so it's an understandable mistake by pilots who we also know don't read no temps and CAA acknowledged this over a year ago because I wrote to the council I copied CAA on that email saying your cross is in the wrong place and CAA came back and responded to me and the council by saying yes the crosses should be one third in from each end and we, we realise that pilots don't always read NOTAMs as they're supposed to so it's important the crosses are correctly placed so as to ensure that we don't have the incidents we've been seeing. So that's what CAA said to the council. Now the council ignored me and they ignored CAA and continued to put the crosses in the wrong place which is why we had further incidents, the last one occurring just before Christmas. So I contacted CAA again and said, look, you know, can you clarify this for us, please? What, what is the situation? What actually closes an airfield? Is it the crosses? Is it the NOTAM? And, and how are we going to improve the safety at this airfield? Now, as I say, two layers of protection. NOTAMs, which pilots should read, but obviously they don't. And some of the people landing here have actually been instructors. So even the instructors don't always read their NOTAMs. So we have the second layer, which is the white crosses. But the white crosses are not in the right place, so pilots are misinterpreting them. So I expected CAA to come back and say again you must put the crosses in the right place and, uh, and also come back to us with some way that they might want to improve the performance of pilots in terms of um, reminding pilots again to always read their NOTAMs because that's important. What CAA came back with was, to be honest, mind-boggling and shocking. CAA said that the council should, should actually put four crosses out if they're closing the runway because there's the grass and there is the tarmac and if you want to close both you've got to put crosses on the grass and crosses on the tarmac one third in from each end. Now I thought oh, that's good that's excellent but then they said however this is optional and I'm thinking optional really optional? They said that if you don't want to use white crosses but well, you don't have to if it represents a safety issue on the ground for these activities that are taking place on the runway, maybe you know the drag racing or the driver training, they don't want the crosses there, then you don't have to put crosses out. And I'm thinking, no, this is not the correct way. The Swiss cheese model demands multiple layers of protection and if you say you don't have to use white crosses, you are removing a layer of protection, a layer of risk management. And then you're solely reliant on NOTAMs, which even CAA acknowledged over 12 months ago, pilots do not always read. So I went back to CAA and said, well, you know, if you're going to remove this layer of protection, what are you going to do to ensure pilots read their NOTAMs? And their response again was totally mind-boggling and beggar's belief. They said, you know, basically we're not going to do anything proactively, we're going to investigate each case as it happens and take um, action accordingly. So they're not going to be proactive. They're not going to say, pilots, 
always check your NOTAMs. They're not going to have a campaign that says you must check your NOTAMs. They're going to, every time a pilot lands in the middle of a closed runway here, they're going to investigate and take actions appropriately. <laughs> no. I looked at CAA's own safety management booklet. They have a booklet, how to properly manage safety. It's their safety management systems booklet. And on that, in that booklet, it clearly states that a good safety management system involves the identification and proactive management of risks. But they're doing the opposite. They're going to be reactive. They're saying, we're not going to be proactive and, and constantly remind pilots to read notes. No, we're going to be reactive. So when something bad happens, we'll just step in and say, hmm, that's what happened, and do nothing about it. I, I, I... So they're dismantling the Swiss cheese model, the, the, the basic the cornerstone of good safety, man, good risk management and good safety. They're dismantling that, and instead they're, they're going to say, well, just go for it, you know, just, we don't care. Oh, I, can't, I cannot believe this. So I also inquired, what actually closes a runway? Is it the white crosses, or is it the issuing of a NOTAM? What is the actual action that closes a runway? And as I understand it by their explanation, the runway is closed whenever the operator, the council, says it's closed. Whether there's white crosses or no tams or anything like that, they did say that no tams are primal, which means no tams are the primary way of advising that the runway is closed. Now, as I read their description of what a no tam is, the no tam itself doesn't close the runway. It simply advises of a change of state, a change of status, that the runway has gone from open to closed. It doesn't actually close the runway. The closure is a decision made by the operator. So, why rely? Why make your number one safety protection layer something that you've already admitted isn't effective. And we've already seen from repeated instances is not effective. Pilots don't read no tams, even instructors don't read no tams, but CAA is saying no tams will do the trick and they're not even taking proactive measures to ensure that pilots are reminded to read no tams. So this is just a disaster in the making. I can't believe that CAA honestly thinks they're managing this properly because they're not. This is terrible. Especially when you consider that CAA will bend over backwards to investigate old men like myself and young boys for flying toy planes or drones in, completely, in complete safety. Yes, they'll, they'll spend months and countless hours of investigation to, to try and nail us, even though we're not doing anything unsafe. Yet we have a proven unsafe situation here and all they can do is say, eh, we don't care. In fact, you don't need white crosses. Take them away. Let's see what happens. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't understand CAA. Their priorities are completely screwed as far as I can see with this particular setup. It makes no sense to me. Does it make any sense to you? I'd like you to go to the comments now. Have your say. Because if we don't do something, if we don't spur CAA into doing something sensible, we know what's going to happen. We know what is going to happen at this airfield. It could end up with someone really being really badly hurt, property damaged, or even worse, someone could die out here. If it, there was one incident where a Cessna came in from this end of the runway and landed short of some a caravan and some wires that were right across the runway, right across the runway. Landed short while the runway was closed. Now, if, if the wind had been blowing in the other direction, they'd landed from that end, they would have probably clipped those wires and the plane would have crashed. But hey-ho, CAA doesn't seem to care. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I just... It, biggest belief. A CAA, don't you even bother investigating me for anything because obviously safety is not your number one priority. It's very clear. If safety was your number one priority, I wouldn't be standing here making this video. Um, you seem to be more focused on just vilifying people for their harmless, safe activities with toy planes and drones. Terrible. I don't know where we go. Regulators around the world have just lost the plot. Totally lost the plot. Anyway, that's my video. I wanted to make it because I want to have it on record, on record that I've identified this so that when something bad happens here, nobody can duck for cover. Because one of the interesting things is that the local council, the airfield operator, seems to be under the impression that CAA is responsible for safety at the airfield. It's, it's aviation, it's planes. We don't regulate planes, they say. It's all down to CAA. Yet CAA have said on a number of occasions, the safe operation of this airfield is the responsibility of the council, the operator. So each side's claiming the other side's responsible. And ultimately, we'll find out. We will find out. Because when something bad happens here, you can bet that further up the food chain, people will demand that heads roll and that people are held accountable. I wouldn't want to be in council's uh, shoes or in CAA's shoes in light of what I've exposed here, their, their non-concern. They're willing to dismantle the Swiss cheese model uh, and thus effectively reduce safety at this airfield. Now, ultimately, the, the safe operation may be the responsibility of council. But I have a feeling that council could claim they were simply operating on recommendations made by CAA and therefore the ball goes back into CAA's court. There'll be a huge bun fight and people will lose 
lose the plot and it'll get you know, be really interesting, something to watch. But I'd rather it didn't happen. I'd rather we had a safe airfield than all the stupid petty politics and buck passing and finger pointing. So it's not going to happen though, is it? Because that's not the way bureaucrats work. Nothing worse than one set of bureaucrats arguing with another set of bureaucrats because nobody wins. Okay, I forgot to mention, now I'm a problem solver. I'm not someone who just likes to complain about the situation unless I've got a solution or something that will help. And I, I, I brought that to the table with CAA and the council in regards to the situation here at the airfield. Uh, I suggested they add another layer or, or mandate another layer of protection for this airfield and that is in the form of a standard join manoeuvre, standard overhead join. That basically means that you can't land at the airfield unless you fly overhead first to make sure it's safe to do so. Now it is advised, CAA advised pilots to always do an overhead join at an uncontrolled airfield because it does give them that ability to reconnoitre the situation. But just like NOTAMs are uh, they advise pilots to read their NOTAMs, it's not mandatory at most uncontrolled airfields. And I suggested make that overhead join manoeuvre mandatory here at Tokara because of the, the huge levels of non-aviation use. And when I suggested that in the conversation uh, that was taking place between the relative parties over this latest situation, CAA basically just washed their hands and said, nothing to do with us, you've got to talk to the airfield operator about that. They, they wouldn't provide an advisor, they wouldn't recommend a course of action, with the best course of action being of course to mandate this overhead join manoeuvre, because only the airfield operator can make that mandatory, CAA themselves cannot do so. And I spoke to the um, CAA quite a, a few years ago about this too, because the, the problem was getting bad then, and I said, why can't the you know the airfield have a mandatory overhead and they recommended I go to the council and make that suggestion I did I went to the council and said look please make an overhead join at this airfield mandatory and the council said no no we've spoken to our experts experts and they said if we do that then pilots are, it'll reduce safety because pilots are unlikely to use their radios <laughs> no. as I say this council has no knowledge understanding experience or ability to properly manage an airfield and they can't even choose experts properly they're experts well any expert that says that is an idiot but mind you mind you having said that remember when I showed CAA my ADSB alarm they were not enthusiastic because they thought it would mean that people wouldn't use other methods of safety people flying models that's the kind of problem we're dealing with they don't understand what we're up to they don't understand what we do they don't understand how we think we think pro safety they seem to believe we're just looking for excuses not to be safe, which is entirely the wrong thing. Because as you've seen on videos on this channel, every time we fly here, that ADB, ADSB alarm is here, and it often goes off alerting us to approaching aircraft long before we can see them, or hear them, or long before they call up on the radio, if they actually bother to call up on the radio. So, CAA, safety, they're not the best of bed mates in my opinion, which is probably why there was another crash and another fatality here just yesterday in New Zealand in the general aviation community. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate, it's very sad. I guess CIA are just too busy looking for people flying drones to pick on. And that's my honest opinion um, and I'm entitled to that. Anyway that's it. So yeah, um, CIA will not recommend a mandatory overhead join to the council and that would be another layer of protection on the Swiss cheese model. I've taken one away by making these white crosses optional and recommending that you know if you don't, don't want to use them you don't have to but they won't replace it with another layer. They won't say to the council, we suggest you make overhead joins mandatory, it'll improve safety. They say, it's it's not the, not in this conversation. It's, we're not interested in talking about it. We don't want to talk about it. It's not related to what we're doing. It is, it's about safety. The whole conversation is safety. You can't say, just because we're talking about white crosses, you can't bring in other measures of improving the safety. That, But it's, bureaucrats are like this. They do not take a holistic view of anything. It's all about the detail, tiny details. They'll look at the tiny details, but they won't look at the big picture. And that's why we have situations like the one here, where the same problems happen time and time again, and eventually something very bad will happen. And I don't want that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Go to the comments, tell me what you think. Is CAA being really pro-safety in this, or are they just dodging bullets and... I don't know, I should just fill me in. Have I got a warped perspective? I, something wrong with me? Do I not see the, what, the brilliance of what they're doing? Or am I just the one who stands up and says, this isn't right, you can't do it this way. And gets ignored every damn time. There you go. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You make it possible for me to rally against the bureaucrats and the regulators of this world when they do stupid stuff like this. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.